कृपा सिंधु श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवासादि गौर भक्त बंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे सो शील गुरुदेव हैज डिस्क्राइब टू अस the incident where the spiritual master of Srila Vyasadev who is the literary incarnation of the supreme personality of godhead for the purpose of giving the vedic knowledge within this world uh how that spiritual master of vyasadev shri narada muni came there to the ashram of vyasadev although shri vyasadev was the most highly learned person <clears throat> he could not understand why he was feeling dissatisfied uh, after having written all of these different vedic literatures as shri guru dev described dividing the the ved into four different ved four different vedic parts also then writing vedanta sutra to summarize all the philosophical conceptions of the vedas then writing mahabharata and in this way uh, shri vyasa dev made his full attempt to give to the conditioned souls of this world that knowledge that they would require to surmount this very difficult maya shakti potency of the supreme lord and attain their eternal constitutional position but yet he was still not satisfied although he had given all of this information for some reason he felt dissatisfied and he could not detect why so when shila narada muni came there then shila vyasadev requested him to please enlighten me uh, what is my defect what what have i not done correctly why am i not feeling satisfied so shri narada muni at that time <clears throat> in explaining to vyasadev this chatur shlok these four nutshell verses complete summary of the shrimad bhagavatam he also described to shri vyasadev about his own life in his previous life before being this great a uh, divine personality shri narada muni who travels everywhere throughout the entire material universes material creation and even within the spiritual worlds shri narada muni goes everywhere he is an eternal servant of shri krishna and shri narayan and he comes and appears here there and everywhere at any moment to help the conditioned souls to guide them shri narada is the guru of thousands and thousands and millions of great personalities but how did he become like this what was the history of his own life so shri narada muni began to describe to vyasadev that in his previous life before being narada he was born in a very simple uh situation he was the son of a maid servant a lady who used to serve uh in a very menial way sweeping the temple and doing all different types of chores and this was all that he had in the world simply his mother she was the maid servant uh living in one kind of ashram temple so narada muni described that when he was a young boy uh very young like 5 years old at that time In the rainy season in India there are four months in which the sadhus generally don't travel so much because it's not so easy to travel here and there so they stay put in one place and during this particular time in this rainy season four very effulgent spiritual personalities great sages they came there to this ashram and they took up residence in this ashram so because narada was a small boy living there he also had the opportunity to associate with these great sages and narada muni describes to vyasadev how 
he was very attracted to these sages. He himself was, had some specific, unique, good qualities and character. He was not like ordinary children that always want to pray, play frivolous games. But rather, <clears throat> he was very uh, quiet, very well behaved. And these sages, they used to sit together and discuss so many spiritual subject matters. And they became so inspired together. And Narada used to hear them speaking all these different topics. So Narada Muni, he began to serve these great sages in very simple ways. He associated with them and he began to hear from them all these topics of transcendental knowledge. As he was hearing from them, he became more and more attracted to them. He became more and more inspired by them. And he, he describes that one day, by their permission, they gave him the remnants of their Mahaprasadam. And when Narada Muni received this great uh, spiritual substance, the very Mahaprasad that had touched the lotus mouths of these great sages, and he very respectfully received this transcendental food stuff, immediately he felt completely purified. And he began to understand that he is, I am not this material body. I am a transcendental eternal soul. Spiritual knowledge came into his heart. And those great sages, they blessed him with transcendental knowledge. This is the potency of divine spiritual personalities. Simply by their desire, simply by them being pleased, they can bestow benedictions and they can uh, enlighten a conditioned soul by their blessings. So these four great personalities blessed this young boy, Narada, and in due course of time, these personalities completed their uh, four months of the rainy season and departed from that place. So now, uh, Narada Muni, who was there with his mother only, uh, one day his mother went out into the forest to gather firewood and various things to perform her services. But she was by the fate, by the will of the Supreme, absolute uh, Supreme Being, she was bitten by a snake when she went into the forest. So at that time, uh, Narada Muni received this news of his mother's departure. And now Narada, he felt that he has nothing else in this world. He was completely without any other shelter, without any other relatives or associations. But because Narada Muni had received such blessings from these great sages, now Narada began to realize that he must leave that place and he must travel and he must begin his process of searching after the Supreme Lord and of performing the practice of pure bhakti, pure devotion. So he, be he left that place. And now Narada Muni began to wander here and there, all throughout the countrysides, hillsides, forests, and everywhere. And finally Narada Muni, at that time he was feeling some distress in his heart, and he came into the middle of a forest area. And in that very dense forest area, he sat down, and according to the instructions that he had received from these great sages, the young boy, Narada, began to perform the process of yoga, bhakti yoga, completely fixing his whole mind and attention, sitting very still in the forest with, in lotus position and meditating, completely absorbed upon the Supreme Lord within his heart. And in this way, very intensively, with uh, devotion, with his attempt to do pure devotion, pure bhakti, now, Within a very short time, a most amazing thing happened. Suddenly, Narada Muni, that Lord that was within his heart that he was meditating upon, immediately he witnessed with divine vision that Supreme Lord right in front of him. And he saw the eternal transcendental spiritual form and spiritual qualities decorated with very beautiful gar uh, uh, garments and carrying the, uh, in, in his four arms, carrying the four symbols of Lord Narayan, the Sudarshan Chakra, the uh, club, 
the disk and the lotus flower. Uh, so now Narada was envisioning the Supreme Lord personally in front of him, the Supreme Absolute Truth from which the entire creation has come. And simply by seeing him in front of him with divine eyes, uh, he began to experience transcendental ecstasies all throughout his body. The Ashtasattvic Vikars, eight symptoms, transformations of the body appeared within the body of Narada Muni. And he began weeping and body trembling, hair standing on end. And in this way, he was experiencing transcendental ecstasy, seeing the Supreme Lord himself. But then all of a sudden, that vision of the Supreme Lord suddenly disappeared. And now Narad, he became very much anxious. He became very worried and he felt disturbance in his heart. And again and again, he sat down in the same way and made the same attempt again to perform this process of meditation. And with extreme effort, he was trying to focus on the Lord. And, but now he had felt like the very greatest treasure that he had ever conceived of and he had attained only momentarily. Now that treasure had slipped away from his hands. With such kind of anxiety, Narada was meditating, deeply absorbed. And in this way he made his attempt, but he was not able again to bring that vision of the Supreme Lord. Why? Because only if the Supreme Lord himself is, pure, is satisfied uh, completely satisfied with the devotee, he may reveal himself by his own mercy and by his own sweet will. It is not possible to force him to come, but he gave his mercy to Narada in this way. So Narada, now he was in great anxiety and distress, but suddenly now he heard a voice. The voice of the Lord spoke to him within his heart. And that voice told Narada, my dear boy, Narada, now I want you to know that I have given you very special benediction, that you were able to envision my divine form, even for a few moments. You were able to experience my divine qualities. You were able to have this wonderful transcendental divine vision. But unfortunately, it is not possible that those personalities who have not been completely purified and completely absorbed in pure transcendental love for me, they cannot see me. But only to give you a special incentive and to give you a special mercy, I gave this vision to you. Because now, this will increase your desire to see me. And therefore, throughout your entire life, you should now perform this process of pure bhakti and you should go everywhere hearing, chanting, and remembering my divine glories. And again, one day in the future, you're, you will become qualified and fully purified. And you will again be united with me and witness my divine beauty and form. And suddenly, that voice disappeared. And now Narada Muni was sitting there all alone in the forest. He felt such deep, deep gratitude to that supreme, absolute Lord of his heart. And now Narada Muni went everywhere after that for his entire life, hearing and chanting and remembering and performing Nava Vidha Bhakti, the nine processes of pure devotion to the Supreme Lord. And at the end, final stage of his life, in that lifetime, then Narada Muni left his body completely absorbed in the Supreme Lord. And by the will of the Lord, Narada attained this next life as the son of Lord Brahma, the creator of this universe. And he became the, the transcendental sage, Sri Narada Muni, who goes everywhere eternally, Narada Muni, Bhajayavina, Radhika Ramana Name, playing on his transcendental vina, musical instrument, singing the glories of the Supreme Lord. So in this way, Narada Muni narrated his life history to Sri Vyasadev and explain to him how only by pure devotion, transcendental love for Krishna, can he, he be attained and can one attain the transcendental spiritual world. So Sri Vyasadeva heard this story from Narada Muni and received further instructions from Narada how he should become absorbed in pure bhakti yoga. You should know that human life 
is very strong. Early is persuading you. Very soon it will come. But only in human form that Krishna has mercifully given this, we can realize soul and super soul. This body is nothing but a bag of stool, urine, blood and so many things. But only in this human life you can realize soul and super soul and equal to the service of Krishna what Rupa Goswami has told. Not in other. No sadhu sangha. Hmm? So, you are very fortunate and you are fortunate that you have come in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the line of Rupa Goswami. Hmm? And luckily, this slok, Nide Hamadam Sulabam Sulabam Slam Sukalpam Guru Karnagaran, Mayanukulin Napasvate Ritam Puman Puabdim Natarezsa. This human body and also very qualified Guru who will not fall down like Swami Bhakti Vedanta. You have. You are lucky. And also uncool by you. Time to time, my devotees are coming. Myself also coming. I am inviting also in Prajmandal Parikrama to you. So many goes there. Naudi Parikrama coming. I am inviting you all. If no money problem, you must come there also. So I am inviting also you. So thus, Sadhu Sangha, everything Hmm? coming automatically. So if in this human life you will not realize Krishna, Krishna Bhakti, this frame, then your life is in that. You are self-killer. What self-killer? Oh, you will be involved in karma, gyan, job, tapasya, other things. So avoid them and come and practice. We are giving Srimad Bhagavatam essence here. You should hear. And then, like Prasad Maharaj, like Naradri Shi Yusha, like other devotees, in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you see Sarupkamo Dharayaramananda and others. How Rupa Goswami, Sanatam Goswami practice Bhakti Jo? Sankhya Purva, Nam Gan Nati Bhi Kava Vasani Kritau, Nidrahar Bihar Kaj Vijitau Chatant Dinao Chujau, Aradha Krishna Gudas Dhe Madhurivan Dein Sam, Vande Rupa Sanatam. Always, totally, no sleepness, always writing books, Remembering, chanting, doing pranam at least 108,008 times for all the Vaishnava, all these places of Krishna past times, Mahaprabhu past times, all the parikas and doing so. Sometimes, He Radhe Prajadevi Ke Chalalite He Nanda Suna Kuta Shri Govardhan Kalpapad Tade Kalindi Bande Ghosan Tavit Sarvatav Khedai Mahavihuna Bande Rusna So, we should follow their line. Don't waste your time only in the attachment of household, making money and be thinking to be happy. Give up all these things. You will all attend this in even a snake, hog, pig, any life you can have. So one in this life you should attend. You should try to do bhajan like them and be happy. My blessing is with you. Go Prema.
Again, we would like to welcome our golden preceptor, that fearless Jagat Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. And his entourage, more fearless, fearless personalities. Prabhus, we're going to have two classes during this week in the mornings, one at 7, 7.15, and one at 11. 10.30, and 10.30. Uh, tomorrow morning, Shamarani will kick it off. So please be in attendance. Every sannyasi here will be given class, in, and also Shamarani. I have the displeasure of telling you two things that are very vital, though, during your visit here. The people who are in charge of this building would not mind seeing us leave. The rule here is that there is no camping anywhere around the building. So if you're camping, you'll have to find another beach. The other announcement... The other announcement was the registration will be over at the table here. For Shadam will not be served to those who do not have a ticket. Jai Prabhu's Hari Hari Prabhu. Govind Jai Jai Gopala Jai Jai Govind Jai Jai
Good, good. 